Geysers. Lots and lots of geysers. Check this out. So this is what I've been working on here over the last, I don't know, several days at this point. I've been collecting all of the different geysers, all of the different vents, just to kind of put them in one single base right here. And as you can see, this one has decided to flood all over the rest of my base. What a punk. Get it. Would you stop? So what I wanted to focus on today was these volcanoes. Now, in the last video right here, there was a question that was, how do we get power out of a volcano? And we looked at steam and we also looked at natural gas. And I want to focus in on natural gas. Now, my original plan was to have this amazing calculator that was full of thermodynamics as we were transferring things to find the equilibrium of the right temperature and predict all the amount of oil that you would need based on the rates of your, of your different volcanoes and stuff. But I didn't make it to the end of that. I figured it might take me so long to make the calculator to make all of that that I would just simply never make a video ever. Long story short, uh, this was taking too long to figure out because as you move from one spot to the next spot in the problem, it just keeps getting longer and longer. So uh, this is a fairly simple setup right here and this is what we're going to work with a little bit to give us some sort of idea of just how much oil we're going to throw in with our liquid, you know, of choice, be it copper, gold, iron, or if we can actually do a minor volcano, we should be get some magma out of it. So let's start off with just these little volcanoes right here and try to figure out which one has the best amount of, or the most amount of energy that we can use to heat up crude oil into petroleum and then everything gets complicated because petroleum and crude oil have different specific heat capacities and well, you get the idea. All right, so. Let's start this off at the very beginning to see just how much energy we have available in the actual just you know, stuff that these volcanoes are kicking out. So that would be in the liquids. So over here in the minor volcano, we should have magma that's kicked out. And you can see its temperature, 1,726 degrees Celsius. But if we look at magma, it has a specific heat capacity of one joule per gram Kelvin. All right, so how much energy is that? Well, I know that I have a specific heat capacity of one. So that's one joule per gram Kelvin right there. And I'm going to factor this on one kilogram. So it'll be like a thousand of that. And then the temperature that it is being kicked out at is going to be 1,726 degrees Celsius. Therefore, meaning this has nearly 2 million joules. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for iron, gold, and copper. All right, so when we compare the actual materials that we have here, magma, or the igneous rock, which is basically the same thing in the game, has a lot of energy. However, iron has a fair bit less from that. Gold is way down below any of that. And then copper is about half of what magma is. So despite the temperature, this being the coldest, since the output material has such a high um, specific heat capacity, it has a lot more energy in it, which means there's a lot more energy that can be transferred into our crude oil in order to raise its temperature. So how the heat transfer works is basically energy is going to move from the hotter something to the colder something until it reaches, you know, equilibrium. And what we want that to be is above the temperature that it is going to A, turn into petroleum, and then B, turn into natural gas. All right, so now let's take a look at the crude oil. Ooh, not solid, crude oil liquid. Please. Well, there is petroleum. That'll be useful. But what about crude oil? All right, so there we go. The properties for crude oil... I don't know why I'm not just looking this up. I could just look this up. See? Crude oil. It's right there. Oh, but it doesn't give me the properties. Okay. Got it. There we go. So 1.69. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for each one of these and try to figure out just how much mass you could actually heat up to this temperature. And I'm not going to get real fancy with it. I'm just going to kind of fudge this number until I get, you know, about the same number down there. 1.69 1.69 Cool No, don't do that 
undo. Okay, temperature. We're going to say it comes in at 100 degrees Celsius, just for some sort of 2855.9. No, wait. 25. Oh, man, there's so many numbers. 2526.9. Oh, 2526.9. That's why that didn't work out. Okay, 25. <laughs> All right, so I did the calculation, and all I was trying to figure out is for each kilogram of magma, how much oil can I heat up to turn into natural gas? So I'm just trying to compare that, a one-to-one -one sort of thing. And what I have here is that uh, every, for every kilogram of magma that I have coming out of a volcano, I can heat up about 1.5 kilograms of oil to natural gas, or at least I should be able to. I'm excluding the transition to petroleum, so mm, we'll have to see. We'll have to give this a little bit of a test to to see what happens. You can see here that my final temperature is set to be 560 degrees Celsius. So if that ends up being true, then the rest of these should be true as well. So for each kilogram of iron, I could do 1.135 of oil. And for each kilogram of gold, I could do 0.3 kilograms. And then I could do just about one to one off of copper. So let's go ahead and run a very simple experiment to see just how close this is right here. 73.15, the temperature of Celsius to Kelvin is just Celsius plus 273.15 for whatever reason. So that will be crude oil right there at 100 degrees Celsius. And then right next to that, I'm going to go ahead and put magma. Oh crap, did I not specify how much? Whoops. Clean her up. So I want one kilogram. Not of mercury. No! All right, let's go ahead and give this another try. Crude oil is going to be right there, one kilogram. And then we got some magma. Let me find that magma. Bam, one kilogram. But this time, it's going to be the temperature that comes out of that volcano. So 1,726.9 degrees Celsius, which is also 2,000 degrees Kelvin. 0 0.05. We're being real accurate. I might as well just be accurate at this point. Here we go. So what I should see is this turns to natural gas. And it did, but my math was must be like way off, <laughs> um, because the temperature is 680 degree, 80 degrees Celsius. What's up with that? Oh no! How did that end up 680? Oh, okay, duh. <laughs> I was like, what in the world was going on there? Because the mass that I was putting in for the oil, I was putting in one kilogram, which means it should be exactly 705. Okay. Wow. For a second there, I was like, man, I did all that for nothing? No, I was, just wasn't doing it right. <laughs> I don't know why I do this to myself. Why? Why do you do this to yourself? Okay. So... Yes, that actually works out. So this is the, that was a good number. Had I done the experiment correctly, uh, I would have gotten the right numbers there. So let me go ahead and do that again. Just because I want to prove it to myself at this point. So I need a little bit of gas here just to kind of activate the reaction. Otherwise, it just kind of sits there and it doesn't do anything. So if I do magma, again, one kilogram of magma down here. You can see that, it's doing its thing. Got a little bit of chlorine, no big deal. And then on top of that, I put oil. Except for this time, make sure you put 1.5 kilograms in there, there we go. And then, what we should see is I get natural gas at a rate around 560 degrees. You can see the reaction is actually a lot slower this time. Maybe because the game is slower, but um, no, there's a lot more crude oil there. What might be interesting is to see what this 
Now that I've got gas above that, when it goes to petroleum, what's gonna happen? <laughs> so petroleum stuck around and it's the same amount of mass. The problem <laughs> is that it's uh, it's got more specific heat capacity. So it's actually gonna take more energy to go these last 100 degrees here. So while my last experiment was more synthetic where I kind of seemed to skip the petroleum stage, I don't know if this one will work the same, but what I should be able to do, hopefully, what I should see is that this will still into natural gas. Come on, baby. Come on, temperature. It only needs to get to 538.9, come on. Wow, it's getting very slow, come on. <laughs> Cycles are gonna go by. Five, three, six, and natural gas. Five, why don't you change? There we go. And then somehow, magically, well, the natural gas ended up at 550 degrees Celsius. So I was within 10. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll work with that. <laughs> Alrighty, so now that I know that these numbers are, are relatively accurate, the next thing is to figure out just how much energy I can actually get out of these volcanoes. All right, so looking at the details of this iron volcano, I can see that they have things like the amount, the, the rate of material and the temperature, and then it's eruption, which is in seconds per uh, amount of time, and then how long it stays active before it goes dormant. So if we kind of ignore just that last one right there, which is dormancy, what we can figure out here is that that is the iron volcano, and I just plug the numbers in. So that is going to be 3.1 kilograms at a temperature of 2,526.9, 36 seconds every 533 seconds, which gives me the amount of time in seconds per cycle gives me 125 kilograms per cycle. If we look at the minor volcano, I know I'm kind of working, you know, back and forth here, but let's go ahead and look at it. I should get 77 kilograms per second. I think you see the temperature there, and then it's gonna be 47 seconds, but man, look at the, how much time is in between the eruptions. So there is a very long time in between eruptions. Our average is going to be three seconds per cycle and it'll be it'll average out to 237 kilograms per cycle. The reason we're figuring out kilograms per cycle is we're going to use that to then convert into natural gas per cycle to figure out how many watts we can generate per cycle off of one of these volcanoes. That's where we're headed. So let me go ahead and just do these other two volcanoes and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. All right, so now we can see the amount of mass per cycle here that I'm getting out of these volcanoes. Bam. So what we can see here in, the, in my situation here, the magma volcano is going to produce the most energy. One, because it's magma. And then two, look at all that kilograms per cycle. It's gonna be absolutely awesome. All right, so now we know some really useful stuff here. I know how many kilograms per cycle I'm getting out of these volcanoes, and I also know how much oil I can convert per kilogram. So if I just kind of pull those numbers in real quick. All righty, so here's some juicy numbers. Now we can see how many kilograms per cycle of uh, oil we can convert to natural gas. Mm -hmm. So long as we actually convert at a one-to-one -one ratio. Let me go ahead and just count this up. That's three, yes, it is a one-to-one -one ratio. Yep, perfect. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the raw power. So if I go ahead and do, hey, I I'm not driving. You settle down over there, uh-oh. Uh-oh, my computer is telling me I I've got too much math going on here. It's starting to panic. <laughs> We're almost at the end though. We're almost there. Um, natural gas is 60 grams per second. So we can figure that one out. Um, all right, so we consume natural gas at 60 grams per second and we get 800 watts, perfect. However, I don't even need to look at that because I can just click on 
<laughs> Stop! Full system processing down here. And I'll have the answers right, right over here in this very simple sheet. Today is all math, I'm sorry. It just ended up this way. I didn't plan it to be this way, but that, that's what it is. Okay, so here we are, natural gas generator. Yes, soon 60, and that produces 480 kilojoules a day. Hey, hey, knock it off. Ah, well, what I wanna know here is its consumption in kilograms a day. So that is for every 36 kilograms, I get 480 kilojoules a day. Oh, oh man! So, so that equals that number divided by 36. Gives me a factor of something. Ooh, so when you do the math and you figure it all out, 4,742 kilojoules a day. That's a lot of power. 1,000... 901, 613, and 764. So those are still kind of some abstract numbers. Let's go ahead and just figure that out in average watts. Boom! Now here's some numbers for you. So taking a look at our volcanoes that are running in the background here, if we were to take all of that and then pump in crude oil, heat it up to the point of natural gas, and then that, run that natural gas through natural gas generators, uh, the raw power of our, our magma volcano would be 7,900 watts. Now this is on average per cycle. If we take a look at the iron volcano, you can see that that is over 3,000 watts. The gold and then the copper are just over 1,000 watts right there. So a huge amount of power that's available to us. And that is only talking about just off of the primary take of running it through the natural gas generator. Now, a ton of power, an absolutely huge amount of power can be extended by running this through, you know, uh, fertilizer makers, which makes more natural gas, which you can then run through natural gas generators to really extend out that, you know, initial amount of gas to begin with and get more and more power out of it. So the true power output for this might be much more. Matter of fact, did I do that here? Oh, I might have already done, wow, we're getting into an old video here. Uh, total system, total system. Okay, so remember there was this old video I did and it was all about how much power can you get out of the natural gas geyser. And the total system was about 3000 watts. And then we built the thing and it was awesome. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I gotta run through this like the ri- <laughs> This is so complicated. Oh, this is gonna make a terrible video. But whatever, okay, I'm sorry. Um, things that interest me, like keep my attention. I can't help it. I like can't stop myself from looking at it. And things that frustrate me drive me nuts and I have to solve them, so. This is one such problem that does both of these, so I'm going to be staring at this forever. All right, here we go. Natural gas generator, 9.88, duty cycle. Okay, yes, that gives me polluted water. So I have too much polluted water. We're gonna exclude things like pumps and stuff. We don't have, we're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna take that and we're gonna run it to the fertilizer maker. So that is going to equal the amount I have have divided by boop, 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 the amount I can process. Hey, get out of your algae distiller. I'm messing up my numbers. Okay, so now polluted water is, is done. So now I'm gonna have kilograms per day. That needs to be scrubbed. And we're just gonna scrub that at one to one with the slickster. So following the slickster now, I now have more crude oil. That's another 488.97 kilograms a day. What did I start off with? 355? What? Okay, so here's where we get into circle dependency math. So that plus that divided by that. 
So I want to make sure I I do this number. Oh, wow! Can we make infinite power? Because technically I have more kilograms a day. Carbon dioxide a day. Hold up. Petroleum generator. No, no, no. Get out of here. Is that? Natural gas generator kicks out an enormous amount of carbon dioxide. Oh. Okay, okay. Nope, nope. Not infinite energy. That was the problem. So I've got 488.97 kilograms of crude oil, which I would have to turn into petroleum and then run it through something different because otherwise I'd have to heat that up and I've used up all of my thermal energy. Gotcha. So what I shouldn't do is feed it into a slickster at this point. Well, I mean, I could, but I'm not going to because <laughs> that adds a whole nother dimension to my calculation that I, I'm just not gonna, not prepared to do right now. So I've got carbon dioxide and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub that carbon dioxide with a carbon skimmer which gives me lots of polluted water so at that point I take that and I divide it by how much I can do I'm now running 18 fertilizers fertilizer synthesizers or fertilizer makers which gives me a lot more natural gas okay that's what I was looking for that is still a huge amount. So we started off by putting 355 kilograms of natural gas in, and then the first time through all of my fertilizer synthesizers, I got back 217. Now here's where, <laughs> here's where we're gonna find out that things are gonna go nuts. Ready? Boom! <laughs> I now am running 46 and a half fertilizer makers which means i'm running over 25 natural gas generators a what i'm consuming five kilograms a day worth is worth of um clean water though oh wait no that turns into polluted water oh which ultimately gets deleted however look at how much how much uh fertilizer you get out of that 3,000 kilograms a day. So if you have a giant mealwood farm, you could cook that, probably with some of the hot natural gas you got floating around, into dirt and have a ton of dirt around, which is really useful. So the raw power of our most powerful volcano, which is this minor volcano over there, guess what? It is 20 kilowatts. <laughs> 20 thousand three hundred and twenty watts i mean that ought to be enough to cover your needs it's i mean your 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 power plant's gonna take up your entire base with almost 50 fertilizer synthesizers but hey that sounds like a design challenge to me so now um is it possible to build a power plant that runs off a volcano completely jeez this thing, this polluted water vent, oh, that's why, I reset it. Man, it is just like flooding my base, it hasn't even been a few cycles, look at all of this! That might even have more power than the whole volcano, like, it's just a little bit of a polluted water vent. It's 44.5 kilograms a second. And look at the temperature of this crude oil coming out of the oil, the leaky oil fissure. It's already up at 324 degrees Celsius, which means mm, a lot more power. I don't know. Look, there were some questions in the comment section over there, which I know everything is, it's going nuts over here. I got calculations, we got comments, but people were talking about the power. How do you actually set it up so that you have enough power throughout, you know, your entire existence? Well. The answer, I believe, is that once you find something like magma, you basically take some oil and turn it into natural gas, and then you have a giant battery that should last you forever. <laughs> I mean, unless you have some sort of ridiculous base, that should be enough power to suit your needs, because you saw off of just one volcano there, theoretically, how much power we can generate off of that. A tremendous amount. Tremendous. Look at that. So if I rename this real quick here. 
volcano, right? Ooh, okay. Here's where we're gonna get real fancy. So what I'm going to do, in order to make this calculation work, <clears throat> that is going to be this value here. So transferred from one page to the next. And then I'm going to give the readout, ooh, buddy. Extended watts down here, bam. Ready? Oosh. Yeah, I like that. Boom, I like it. Check it out. Okay, sweet. So now, even though I didn't think I was gonna get here, um, yes, I have a calculator where you can put in the properties of your volcano if you're converting it, you know, oil into natural gas, and then get the amount of raw power out of it and the amount of power that you could potentially get out of it if you run it back through itself a bunch of times using a carbon skimmer. There is a lot of work <laughs> wrapped up in these forms. This is ridiculous. Like, what did I do? I played today, Brothgar plays a spreadsheet. <laughs> Uh, we're going to index this one to 13, by the way. There we go. Copy 13. I'm liking this. Wow, I didn't think I was going to get there, but I did. In theory. But now I got to build the thing, right? You know what the system doesn't account for? Is when you heat up the natural gas, right? You're going to cool it back down using crude oil. So that way you kind of preheat some of that crude oil before it goes into the chamber where it gets converted into natural gas. So you get energy back out before you actually can get it down to a cool enough temperature before you pump it into your power plant. So while this number may be nearly 8,000 watts, the true number might actually be much, much higher. Ah, uh, well, this is gonna be interesting because I definitely wanna try to make a system that that makes that much power. All right, so I know that today was pretty much all math, but the next step here is going to be trying to build a power plant system that effectively uses some of these volcanoes to really produce a lot of power. And we'll also kind of, you know, we could take that same sort of a design and we could apply it to, you know, maybe a vent or a, a geyser or something of, you know, those natures. But I think it's just gonna be kind of crazy to see just how big of a power plant we can actually build with one of these volcanoes. So I'm looking forward to it. That'll have to happen in the next video or <laughs> videos. I'm not sure how hard it's gonna be. Uh, this one took quite a while to make even though it ended up being all a spreadsheet. I can't completely say for certain that my math is 100% accurate, but I suppose there's only one way to find out and that's to actually try to build the thing. We'll have to figure that one out in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of of spreadsheet based on oxygen not included and if i've earned your subscription then thank you so much for that have a great day guys stay awesome peace brothgar out <laughs>